Hey what's up everyone, how are you all doing today? Welcome to episode 18 of our Let's Play series of Adeptus Mechanicus with a Heretic DLC. Last episode was a little bit of a long drawn out one I'm afraid, hope you guys didn't mind. Um, the encounters took a little longer to get through and we weren't making some good decisions along the way. Um, however, the long drawn out battle did mean that we've got a nice healthy hall of Blackstone. So let's get straight to our cohort, see if we can upgrade it a little bit more. Oriochus is first. We don't have any cognitive canisters yet. Should we give him this one over here? Servo scum to get a bit of damage. Should we try and give him one more? So what armor's he already got? He's got he's got everything. So what's on offer? Chest piece with 3 HP 1 energy, hood with 2 HP 1 energy. Gauntlets with an extra bit of energy damage. What have we already got? Straight up 4 HP, 2 HP, 1 energy, 2 HP, 3. 3 HP, 3 movement. Um, I think we're going to go for that chest piece. We are going to lose 1 HP overall. We will gain an extra bit of energy damage, uh, shielding. So we're on, we're on two now. We've still got 20 HP, so it's still a nice healthy amount for him. Now we've still got two free augment slots on this chat. So I think the start will take off that basic ratio. Give him a slightly upgraded one. He's still got one augment slot left. So we can either give him something like this, and stick on the top. Stabby stick device things. So I think we're actually going to give him this. We'll give him cognition. Is it cognition mechandendrite? I think. Jeremiah's already on 12. He's on 12. He's on 13. So let's do Jeremiah next. Um, enhanced enhance. We've got. Yeah, we've got the energy enhancer. I forgot about getting the last mission. So we put this on. This perk means it's going to cost one less mission to use. And because this only costs one to use, that's going to be free. So every time we use that, it's not actually going to cost us anything. Um, so let's actually get it on. Let's go and take off that scanner. He's still got. This chap's also got one augment slot free. Stabby stick as well, ratio stabber. Really handy for getting the cognition. So we can only get one more upgrade done, so let's do it on Minaris, get him up to 13 as well, and then I think that's all of them up to the same level. So I don't think we have any power field generators yet. So we can either go for another bit of armor or one of these perks. We've already got two with that. He's not really going to use ranged weapons in the end. We can give him this one, though. That's going to be quite handy. Restore him one HP at the end of each turn. So we've got one augment slot with this chap as well. Quite happy with his weapon setup at the moment. He's got all his armor pieces. He's already got a cognition stick. So, because we've got, I think, from the gauntlets here, one physical damage. I think we'll give him this Infestus Mechandendrite. So that one, you stab enemies, get cognition. This one, you just deal one damage. But as you can see, it's physical damage, and because our gauntlet's given us one extra physical damage, we should be doing two to each, each use of that. So if I'm right, we're now all, yeah, all on 13. It's all our cohort. All four of them are up to scratch. We've only got a couple more tech priests to get, and these two. As far as missions go, I think we're going to do what we said at the end of the last episode. We're going to take one of his boss encounters. So we've got the Lord Astronomer in the Acropsis Sector. Eradication Ray goes in a straight line through all units. 79 energy damage, not bad. Coggle Cultaris. We've not used any of them at the moment. Pretty handy, but just not using them. Troop deployment reduction. Cost that is. That's pretty good. 
750 Blackstone, not bad. The Void Admiral in the Agrilex Sector. So what's this? Plasma Caliber. 5 to 7 energy damage. Destroys 1 energy armor straight up. That's good. And destroys 2 energy and 2 physical on the machine spirit. That's a pretty handy little gun, that. We upgrade the Sanctus Canister. That's cool. It gives you even more on your damage, you know, your crit chance of movement. Level 2 Ranger. 109 Blackstone. That's not a bad run there. Let's see what we've got for the Corrupted King in the Ubjail sector. So we've got a heavy Foster Blaster. That's pretty cool. 4 to 6 energy damage. In the cone area. Cool. An upgraded Refractor Field Generator that absorbs 10 damage. Nice. Cognition Gauge Increase. And 120 Blackstone. Well, I think we're probably going to go with this one here, guys. Really want to get that refractor for Leonardus. Ignition gauge increase is going to be brilliant. Another big gun. Yeah, let's do this one. So, because this mission might be a little bit more tricky, let's go with one fodder. Get our vanguard in there. I think we'll also put the Rustle Prince carrying Rustle. Give him a little play. And this is the Castellan robot that we unlocked at the end of yesterday's mission. It's his stats aren't too bad, but you do have the whole penalty that's going to cost five cognition just to deploy him. So we can't. It's not really going to be worth putting him in a field until we've got a much bigger cognition gauge. This mission's actually going to increase it by one, so that'll be us moving in the right direction. So these um, boss encounters, they're a little bit different um, to a normal tomb mission. We are in a tomb, unlike the heretic missions, but there's no route that you can sort of plan out. Uh, it's all linear, so you've got one course direction. You've just got to go all the way to the end and get the boss encounter. It means you can't plan your route, you can't try and make it a shorter run, you can't decide where you're going. It also means that every room you move forward, your awakening level is going up, so by the time you get the boss encounter, your awakening level is normally on about 3. Um, so you get more, more enemies spawn and they reanimate. Many female ports cover the outer shell of this Necron panel. Perhaps interfacing could improve the team's performance. Hmm, interfacing with female ports. Well, we've got some HP. Not too bad. Didn't need it. But at least we didn't lose anything. Let's see what we can do on this next one. Could be a trap. Was it a booby trap? Several human skulls, still bloody and evidently recently removed from their former owners, sit in a circle on the floor. They appear to have been deliberately placed. Spiritual. The past of the dead must be marked, even here. Pray over the skulls. Scientific. Place a monitoring device near the skulls to see if the flayed ones return to it. Suspicious. It must be a trap. Avoid the circle. I think that is a little bit suspect, really. I'd like to try and learn something from it. But I'm suspicious of the booby trap. Hey! The cohort skirts around the ring of skulls. In doing so, they feel a weight of unseen oppression lift off them, 
as if they have left behind something sinister and unholy that meant to do them harm. They thank the Omnisai for the deliverance they are sure they have just been granted. I thank the Omnisai for a little bit of cognition. A relief of the glowering Necron Lord looms from the wall of his chamber, visible through the smears of filth and gore that cover so much of the tomb of Ubjau. Ransack. The image suggests the chamber is important. Search it for anything of value. Record. Relay picked grabs of the image to Castus Metallican for study. Remove. Take the image off the wall so it can be transported to the Castus Metallican. Removing will be good, but I think that will probably trigger something. Pick the grabs is good. Run, sack it. I'm gonna do some pictures, see if we can learn something from here. After cleaning off the worst of the filth, the image of a Necron Lord becomes visible along with lesser Necrons submissive at his feet. The Lord carries the implements of punishment, a segmented whip and a cudgel. Three more cognition. That's cool. And so we can keep it. I keep making the right choices. Which we certainly didn't do in the last episode, that's for sure. The crushed and mangled body of a Skitari lies among the detritus of this chamber. Unlike the other dead encountered in the tombs, it shows no sign of the Gauss Blasters of Necron Warriors or the Blades of the Flagrants. Instead, it looks to have fallen victim to massive blunt trauma. It's not a good sign. Cause of death. Examine the corpse for clues about his death. Funeral rite. Pray for the Omnicide to guide the soul of the unfortunate dead. Cremation. Burn the body to put it beyond the use of the flayed ones. Normally go with fire. Definitely not going to go for praying. I would like to know the cause of death. I'd like to know what massive monstrosity killed this poor guitar on the High value target, full reanimation, probable. The body was crushed by a huge weight, inconsistent with the Necron war forms so far encountered in the tomb. In the absence of environmental causes, it is apparent an unknown construct of great size caused the death. Free cognition, and we now know that there's a massive Wampus stomping Necron somewhere. Probably going to be the Lord. More female ports and interfacing possibilities. Okay, 2 HP. No good for us just yet. But also no hindrance, so that's. The tracks of something huge run through this chamber, leaving gouges in the gore-smeared floor. Whatever it was, it left scraps of torn skin and globs of shredded muscle tissue in its wake. Slow and purposeful. Follow the tracks cautiously, so as not to alert the target. Make haste. Follow the tracks with all speed. Lie in wait. Set up an ambush here in case the target returns this way. Definitely want to lie in wait. That's almost like backtracking. I'm just waiting. Making haste. No, nope. don't want to do hasty. Let's go slow and purposeful. The cohort moves carefully along the route indicated by the tracks maintaining stealth as much as possible. They are able to inspect some of the remains left in the wake of the creature many of whom are Skitari whose augmentations and gear can be salvaged as a cohort passes by. A bit of extra blackstone. Not bad, not bad. So as you can see here, we're nearly up. Oh, there we go, we are on the floor.
This chamber is dominated by a hideous sight. A mass of flesh and body parts pulses in the centre of the chamber, like a cocoon assembled from the corpses of the tomb's dead. The mass is composed of both fresh Skitari dead and older, mummified bodies, probably from the vanished settlers of St. Eckhart's home. Four buggers. Here he is, Lord of Jal. Flailing in the wind nicely. Right, I'm pretty sure that go down that way, it's going down and away. It's got to go up this way, spiral up around. It doesn't look like there's any source of cognition. Just a bit of a pain. So move all those guys right up to the front line. Right, let's bring this one around the side. So let's get straight up there. I think what should we bring in? Should we bring in our vanguard? We've got full cognition bar. So let's bring in our vanguard unit. Pretty sure Oriochus has got a perk to his servo skull that's gonna up the Vanguard, so we'll delay that turn. to move him, we're going to pick one up off his body, and we're going to stab him in. Gives him a little bit extra, and now we can get all the way up to here. That's a brilliant push from over here. And we're still only one, one cognition down on max. I'll purposely lift that one there, so we can have a couple of my guys. Got the old uh, cognition sticks as well. Wasn't it? I totally forgot to do the servo skill. What a conker. So yeah, if you have a look again here, it's going to cost us a point to push this extra little bit further. But we can get it back. I think this is quite a, a cool, slightly game breaking mechanic how you can get cognition of the same failed enemy from multiple guys. It's a bit of a result, really.
check this guy out, how massive and sort of hulking and looming he is. Oh, pants, I'm not scary with that voice. I'm just bringing some more blade ones in. I'm not going to get distracted. I'm going to keep pushing forward. I'm going to use a bank up to get rid of this one. Sorry, Vanguard guy. I'm going to keep going this way. Let's use the next one to push him up a bit more. Oriochus, right. Still before I forget. Give him his buff. Okay. So we've got, we've got. Let's kill that one before we forget about him. Stalker out here robbing that vanguard. I could have just kept them down there, keeping them company. No. 
That's not too much of a loss. shot and hope that he pays shifts out my way for a bit. Stabby. I hope that's going to do two. It's only done one. You get the extra physical damage. Kind of sucks. Right, he's going to take the hit from the death mark. to us. Waltzing. Very gentlemanly stride, but... Gone down there for. Some interesting choice by the AI. He's gonna get hit by him as well, isn't he? I think. No, he's definitely going to heal.
Okay, I'm just gonna keep them there where I save that cognition. Free shot in there first. Well, we've got freedom of this going. So, we'll put our energy counter on. this and with that can score it's going to deal a good bit of damage right there we go 14 move them around the back of them need to give them a little stab here get an extra cognition back yeah, that's a good little attack phase there it's out the hill for attacks and clearing them out of the way. So before I do this, I'm going to get our energy air enhance on as well. And that's going to help this machine spirit. Okay, seven. Let's move him in. save at the moment, it's one that someone else can use to attack with, or heal with, yeah, there we go, remember to do that, This one. I oh, know, I thought that might attack our guys. It won't, but we're still going to use our last bit of cognition. So we use the flame instead anyway. It's going to give him a little bit of tick damage over time as well, which is cool. Give him an extra little poke for good luck. Get a rust orker in. Ooh, what's going on there? Camera's going all hit pop. These death marks on the dumb one at the moment. Not that I'm complaining. Pretty sure we're gonna get up jail, but I don't want to take no chances. Let's give a little bit of physical armor with this guy. Probably a bit late. There we go. Get our 
physical cans come on. Let's see if we can do this in one swipe. Is that 13 to 15? Oh yeah, good dip. You see, he, he was dead even before he got hit. He knew he was dead. <laughs> he just gave up. I like it. Mission complete. The hulking horror that is Lord of Jow collapses to the ground in a mass of torn flesh and ruptured metal. The fusion of biological and mechanical parts prevents the remains from teleporting away in their entirety, leaving many gory chunks of Lord Jow's structure oozing on the floor. The cohort can recover these after they've given the Omnissiah thanks for helping them prevail against such a monstrosity. Oh yeah. Lord Jow dead. Too bad on losing Blackstone there. Not even a hundred. Well, we haven't. We didn't kill many enemies, so we're probably not going to walk away with a big haul this time. But we've got a new gun, the heavy phosphor blaster. That well, looks cool. And the upgraded refractor field generator. Ignition gauge increase. That was brilliant. Awakening's gone up to 41. So I think that was what four or five on that one. Which isn't great, but you can't really help it on the boss encounters. So we've got a new Canticle here, Canticle of the Iron Soul. The next attack will deal plus four damage. Yeah, that's okay. Just a one. Well, there it is, guys. Slightly shorter episode today. I hope you don't mind. We've still got some good combat done, though. Not as much Blackstone holding as we would normally like, but it's still a little bit to play with for the next one. So, if you enjoyed that, please leave us a like and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next one, and in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.